Hi, Greg Bruns here with another useful tip for you. What I want to talk about today is the wiring of a two-stage heat pump. Now, I'm not going to talk about every single connection on this two-stage heat pump. I'm really just going to focus on what seems to be tripping guys up the most. So with that, we'll get right into it. So on a two-stage heat pump, the only difference between two-stage and single stage is you got a Y1 and a Y2. Other than that, it's a, it'll hooks up just like a regular single-stage heat pump. Uh, and then your O connection, your R, your G, your C, all of that is the same whether it's two stage or single stage. So really what seems to trip guys up is the auxiliary heat function or emergency heat function of the thermostat. So first of all we got to determine what type of thermostat we're using. So if you're using a, a thermostat that has uh, three stages of heat or if you're using a thermostat that has four stages of heat. So remember in heat pump heating mode Y1 will be your first stage of heat pump heating. Y2 is your second stage of heat pump heating. And then we go to W2 as our third stage. In some thermostats, that would be actually auxiliary one. And if you have a four stage capable thermostat, W3 would be your fourth stage or auxiliary two on a lot of thermostats. So now, now that we know that, now we proceed with getting it connected up properly. So W2, if we're using an outdoor thermostat, would come out come outside to W2N on the outdoor unit. If the outdoor thermostat is closed, it'll allow it to go through the outdoor thermostat into W2 out and go back inside and pick up our W1 terminal on the indoor unit, which turns on the electric heat. What I mean by this outdoor thermostat, what does that thermostat do? Well, it holds off the electric heat unless it's below uh, the temperature that's allowed to function at. So what I mean by that is, for example, let's say you got a customer shoves the thermostat all the way up and it's 50 degrees outside. Well, that thermostat out there is going to be electrically open, so therefore, even though we sent the, sent the signal out here to W2N, doesn't mean it's going to go any further because this thermostat's open, it's not going to be able to go back inside and turn on electric heat. So the only thing that's going to come on or be energized is Y1 and Y2 running that heat pump in, in second stage heat pump heating mode. Now, if that thermostat is closed, then it's going to be allowed to come out of W2 out, go back inside and hook, hook up to W1 and turn on the electric heat because that thermostat is closed. Now, what else can energize W2 out? Well, the other thing that can energize W2 out is defrost and then some boards malfunction. If the thing's out on high pressure or low pressure or something like that, some of those defrost boards will uh, energize the W2 out terminal to bring on the electric heat because it's seeing the Y signal, but the heat pump's not functionable. So that's the other way it can be hooked, can energize W2 out. So now moving on to one more thing here, the E terminal. The E terminal with a two-stage heat pump, the only time you're going to find that is if you have a true heat pump thermostat, which means it's got to have a heat selection and an emergency heat function. Okay, so what does emergency heat do for us? Well, that you want to run directly into W1 on the indoor unit so that if the customer turns the thermostat to emergency heat, let's say the heat pump's not functioning and you, and you instruct them, okay, it's all froze up, it's got a defrost problem, and you instruct them, hey, turn it to emergency heat so I can get out there and look, look at the heat pump. So when they flip it to emergency heat, that's going to shut down this outdoor unit and only allow the electric heat to function. So one other thing we need to cover here too is if we are only using a three-stage capable heat pump two-stage thermostat, you may need to jump W1 and W2 together on that indoor unit in order to get all the electric heat to function. Because on our newer air handlers, if you don't energize W2, depending on how many kW, it may not turn on the, all the electric heat. If you look at the very last page of the installation instructions on our air handlers, it gives you the sequence of what, how many banks of electric heat is going to come on depending on whether you've got W1 or if you have W1 and W2. So if you need to know that sequence, just look in the back of our installation instructions on our air handlers. So anyway, I hope you found this tech tip useful. Keep tuning in to edgetechhvac.com for more useful tips.